So my name is Liesl Hintz, and I am an assistant professor at Johns Hopkins University School of Advanced International Studies. I study Turkish domestic identity politics and foreign policy. Well, I think the U.S. is really conflicted in what it needs to do here, and I think it's also been sending mixed messages to, uh, to Turkey. And I think one of the reasons is that elements of the U.S. government don't necessarily agree with each other. They don't have a coherent message. One of, I think, the most detrimental things that the U.S. did was to, from a Turkish perspective, announce that they were setting up a special border protection force. And to Turkey, that contravenes the message that was given, saying we are temporarily arming the YPG, we will take back the weapons that we have given to them, and we will remove our presence. Now, from a Turkish perspective, the U.S. has committed to a continued presence in the region, a continued support of a group that the Turkish government sees as a legitimate, in their eyes, security threat. So I don't think it's just a misunderstanding. I think that's part of it, and mixed messaging. But I think there's also a genuine conflict of interest, and this is something that is relatively unprecedented in the U.S.-Turkey relationship. We saw a major conflict in 1974 when Turkey invaded Cyprus against U.S. wishes, but now for the U.S. to be arming what Turkey sees as a terrorist group is something that is unacceptable, along with uh, the holding of Fethullah Gulen and the Reza Zarab trial and a number of other policies that Turkey finds completely unacceptable. What's problematic, I think, is that Turkey is unwilling to uh, abandon its campaign against the YPG, against Kurds, because it uses it as a domestic political tool to rally nationalist support. So it has no interest in allowing the, uh, or in abandoning that particular mission. Um, I mean, I think the U.S. is in a very tough position. One, because the U.S. has repeatedly supported Kurds, uh, different Kurdish groups, in its own military interests, and then has sort of abandoned them later on. So I think that the U.S. feels, in a sense, a responsibility to try to continue to help the Kurds. They are clearly a very effective military ally, as they were in Iraq and in Syria against the Islamic State. But I think the U.S. is very hesitant to involve itself uh, or to try to give any kind of official support. And we saw this during the referendum. Um, and this is something I think that's very difficult for, for the KRG itself. And another element of that is how can the KRG necessarily believe any of the promises that Baghdad is making when, in effect, not everyone in the KRG supported the referendum and that there were a lot of intra-Kurdish divides there as well? Well, I think there's a limited amount of pressure that the U.S. can push on uh, Baghdad. And as much as it would like to see a peaceful resolu resolution to this issue, there's also a point in which the U.S. is hesitant to get involved in what it sees as the domestic politics of Iraq. And the U.S. has, frankly, gotten way too involved in the domestic politics of Iraq in the past. As much as it sees the Kurds as an incredibly valuable ally and has been concerned about their fate in the past, I think that it's hesitant and also cognizant of the extent to which it can exert any kind of effect pressure.